Ever wondered if there was an easier way to get great sounds over both major and minor 251s? Well in this lesson we're going to look at a technique that makes it super simple for anybody to play all their major and minor 251s and get a really clear sound using just two simple shapes. So let's get into it. So the 251 is a really common progression in jazz and in all music. And there's two flavours of 251. There's the major 251, which consists of a minor 7 chord, a dominant chord, chord 5, going to the 1 chord, a major 7 chord. And then there's a different flavour of 251, the minor 251, which generally starts with a minor 7 flat 5 or half diminished chord, moving to a dominant chord, often with a flat 9, and then moving on to a minor chord as chord 1. And we can find different iterations of these and different mixes of these. We may find a normal minor 7 with a dominant flat 9 chord going to a major chord, or a minor 2-5 going to a major 1. We find them in lots of different orders. But that requires us to learn a lot of different aspects of harmony, to get the right sounds over these different progressions and often they can fly past very quickly in that piece of music. So today we're going to look at some really simple four note shapes that are going to help us get really good clarity on any type of 251 using just four notes. Now we all know that it's really important to spell out at least some of the chord tones over the course of one of these progressions because that gives us harmonic clarity. And then there's also other aspects to consider, for example, the guide tones or voice leading. These are all important to make sure that our sound sounds like the progression of a 251 rather than us just floating about in a major scale or a minor scale and hoping that it all works out. So the traditional method is to play the chord tones, learn the chord scales or modes or key centres that are related to that and just try and make sure that we get these kind of elements in when we're improvising. However, this can be really tricky and particularly if it's a faster piece or the 251s are very short. Maybe the 2 and the 5 only last 2 beats, for example. And this is a lot to get in under the pressure of playing, with technique to think about and everything else. But there is a simpler way of going about this and still retaining all these elements. So this lesson is really useful if you really don't know too much about how to play over 251s, but it's also really useful if you're a more advanced player and you're just struggling with those tricky short 251s, particularly the minor 251s, which actually have a lot more harmony behind them. And remember, whether you're into jazz or pop, DJ sax or classical, there's literally thousands of lessons in sax school. So come and join us, click the link below, there's still a 14 day free trial. So first of all, let's have a look at the major 251. So as I said earlier, this is built of a minor 7 chord, chord 2 of a major scale, then a dominant 7 chord, chord 5 of a major scale, and then a major 7 chord, chord 1 of a major scale. And this is the classic 251 progression. And we see it in hundreds and hundreds of tunes in different keys and in different orders. So, what we're going to look at today is a small group of notes that not only is very melodic, but also contains a good smattering of chord tones and voice leading that's going to make sure that we get a really clear sound on these chords 
but without all the technical and harmonic difficulties that come along with normally playing 2-5-1s. Now this shape might also seem quite familiar to you as you start playing it, and that's because it's literally the first four notes of a minor pentatonic. So in D minor, for example, that would be the notes D, F, G, and A. It's as simple as that, and that's the shape we're going to use to really get a great sound over these two five ones. So on the minor chord, on the minor seven chord, we're literally going to start this shape on the root. It's going to give us the root of the chord, the flat three and the five. But we've also got this extra note, we can call it a fourth in the scale or an eleventh from a chord point of view. And that adds in just a little bit of colour. And also it's really important to mention at this point that if you've ever tried just improvising using only chord tones, you find that even though it gives you quite a strong sound of the progression, it can sound a little bit boring, and that's because you're improvising in one interval. You're improvising in thirds. And the issue with improvising in just one interval is melody requires smaller intervals. It wants some tones or semitones. It wants to break up those intervals, and that's what makes it interesting and varied and adds contrast to our melodies. And this little group does that. We've got some chord tones and we've got some tones. So we've got everything we need to give a really strong sound on that minor seven chord. Now, as we move across to the dominant chord, we're actually going to carry on playing exactly the same shape. So if this was a D minor seven chord and we were playing the D minor four note group, as we're going to call it, we'll carry on playing the D minor four note group. And you might say, well, what about the chord tones? Well, let's examine those notes. So the D is the fifth of G7, the F is the flat seven, and the G is the root, and then the extra note, the A, is a ninth. So we've got a very similar thing here without changing shapes. We've got three chord tones and one extra note that helps us melodically get a stronger sound because we've got more intervals. So it's a really effective way of combining the two and the five in one simple to play shape. In this case, the D minor four note shape. As we move to the one chord, the C major seven chord, we're actually going to play a different minor shape. We're going to play the E minor shape. And once again, you'll notice that within the shape is the third of that chord, the fifth of the chord, and the major seventh, and the extra note is the sixth. Now, sometimes the one chord might even be C6, in which case we'll have the third, the fifth, the sixth, and our extra note will be the seventh. But either way, we're always going to still get three chord tones and that extra sound in there that's going to help break up the melody and break up the intervals in the group. Now, as we look at the movement of that D minor shape going to the E minor shape, we can see that actually built into that, apart from chord tones and a really good sounding melodic group, is there's some voice leading going on between those two movements. In fact, it contains one of the more important voice leading methods that move from five dominant chords to one major chord, and that's the sound of the seventh, the flat seven on that G7 chord, the note F, moving to the third of that major seven chord, the note E. So it gives a really nice sense of resolution and cadence built in to these groupings. Now with this being a major 2-5-1, the other thing that I particularly like about this is that these two groups move upwards. You're going from the D minor grouping up to the E minor grouping. And because this is a major 2-5-1, it's quite uplifting. It's major. And that movement up between the two groups, I think, just helps magnify the kind of happy sound of a major 2-5-1. So let's hear what this sounds like over a full 2-5-1 progression. Now, I think that gives a really clear, definitive sound between the 2-5 part of the progression and the 1 part of the progression. 
and it's really easy to play. The great thing about these groupings specifically is there's no semitones in them, and semitones are the biggest problem on saxophone. The movement from B flat to B natural or F to F sharp, they're tricky, particularly if you're just starting out. So these groups are pretty easy to play in every single key, which makes them great. And we're playing them over one of the most common chord progressions that you're going to find in the majority of standards. So this means you can go through it, write on these groupings, do a bit of practice and get a really good solid sound without having to learn all the theory yet behind 251s. <laughs> Now, what about the minor 251? So, as we've mentioned earlier, this is a slightly different progression. So, we generally start with a minor 7 flat 5 chord as chord 2, and sometimes this is written as the half diminished chord, which is a circle with a little line through it. And then we move on to the dominant chord, which nearly always comes with a flat 9 and quite often a flat 13th on that chord. And already we're getting into a lot of harmony that maybe you're not quite ready for. And once again, we're going to look at a solution that means you don't need to worry about that quite yet if you're not ready for that kind of step. And then finally, the chord 1 is just a minor chord or a minor 7 chord quite often. Now, we've already dealt with that chord. What do we do on minor 7 chords? We just play the minor shape starting on the root. So we're going to do nothing different there to what we did when it was a 2 chord in a 2-5-1. But we need to deal with these new minor 2 and 5 chords from this progression. So if we look at what we originally did on the minor 7 chord in the major 2-5-1, the only real difference in the notes we're playing is there's not a natural 5 anymore. So this is our second shape and we're going to call it the half diminished 4 note shape. So all we're going to do is flatten the 5th. So instead of it being D, F, G, A, now it's going to be D, F, G, A flat. And we're going to get that flat 5 in. Now the same thing's going to happen again. We're going to get three solid chord tones and an 11th again which is going to make it nice and melodic and break up those intervals. When we move to the dominant chord, we're actually going to keep exactly the same shape. So we're going to keep this D half diminished four note grouping. So it's going to be D, which is the fifth, F, which is the flat seventh of this chord, G, which is the root of the chord, and actually we're going to get the flat nine. Now we can think of this as the extra note, but also it's an important note to get the right sound on a minor 2 5 and particularly on that 5 chord. So in some ways we've actually got four chord tones here that are important to the sound. So once again the 2 and the 5 on the minor 2 5 1 are linked together with one single shape. And as we know when we go to the 1 chord we already know what we're doing on minor chords, we're just playing the minor shape. Now you'll notice in this one there's some really nice cadence movements going from one shape to the other shape. But also, interestingly, in this minor one, which is a bit sadder because it's minor, the actual shape now moves downwards. We're going from the D half diminished shape moving down to the C minor shape. Really, really simple way of doing it. And this is really useful even if you're a more advanced player, particularly for those faster minor 2-5-1s, which are renownedly quite fiddly to get the right sound on. If we were to look at the harmony from this, there's a lot of scalic and tonal variance that happens in minor 2-5-1s and actually quite a lot of options. So this is just a really simple way of getting a solid sound without really worrying about that side of harmony and all the aspects that that involves. So let's see what this sounds like over a minor 2-5-1. Okay, so once again, hopefully you agree that that gives a really clear, definitive sound over that progression. So if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe and click the like button. It really helps. 
I do a monthly lesson in SAT school called Explore Jazz, where we get into all sorts of elements of jazz improvisation, jazz practice and how to work on tunes to become a better improviser. And I've actually got a course coming up at the beginning of 2024 where we explore the full potential of these two groupings to get more contemporary sounds. So check it out, there's still a 14 day free trial. So let's do a little recap of what we've learned today. So on minor chords, minor seven chords, minor six chords, even if you came across more exotic chords like minor major seven chords, you just play the minor four note grouping starting on the root. It's as simple as that. Now on dominant chords, we're basically starting on the fifth. And our only rule to remember there is if it's a dominant chord with a natural nine, like in a blues or a major two, five, one, we just use the minor grouping. However, if we want the flat nine, maybe because it's a minor two, five, one, or maybe just because we want that sound as a substitution, we need to play the half diminished four note grouping starting on that fifth. And then when we get to the one chord, if it's a minor chord, then we just start on the root again. It's no problem there. If it's a major chord, we're going to play the normal minor four note grouping starting on the third. And it's as simple as that. And we can mix and match those together for the different types of 251. Maybe it's a minor 25 with a major one. Maybe it's a major 25 with a minor one. It doesn't matter which it is. We've got a mix now that can deal with every variant of 251 types that we're possibly going to come across. And remember as well, we could use this over a 5-1 and we could also just use this over a 2-5. We don't need all the chords of the 2-5-1 to apply this method. So I'm going to take the changes of a tune that's got lots of these variants in there. It's got some 2-5s without 1s, it's got some 2-5-1s, it's got some minor 2-5s and it's got some minor 2-5-1s. And it's actually the changes of Coltrane's moments notice and I'm literally going to play only the four note groupings that we've talked about the minor four note groupings and the half diminished four note groupings in the way that we've talked about applying them through this entire tune to just give you an example of what this sounds like in practice <laughs> Obviously using this method does mean that there are some available sounds missing from your improvisation and in some important guide tones aren't there as well. However, there's enough there for clarity of movement between the five and the one, particularly in all these progressions. And it's a great place to start if you're just getting into improvisation and you're coming across a lot of two five ones. And even if you're a more advanced player and just need something extra, a different sound or a way of dealing with faster, shorter two five ones, particularly those minor ones, which are renownedly awkward, then this is a great method to practice. So give it a go and apply it to some of the tunes that you're currently working on in your practice. If you want to get this method nailed in all keys, don't forget you can grab the backing tracks. It's all keys of major and minor 251s. Just follow the link below and I'll see you in the next lesson. Until then, take care. Bye bye.